In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a fast, high-quality scanning setup for mounted slides using the boop boop trigger. Okay, so like nobody mounts slides anymore. Plenty of people shoot slide film, but we all put it through an enlarger, more likely a scanner, and nobody puts them in slides or a, you know little mounted cardboard things. So um, there happens to be a lot of people like. My uncle and I have my grandpa's collection of 40 years worth of mounted slides and um, a couple of my mongoose customers have 40 years worth of mounted slides, like tens of thousands if not hundreds of thousands of mounted slides and they're super slow to scan. And so um, I had a family friend who was a photographer for 35 years um, and he called me up and he said, hey, Ethan, you know, I have all of these slides. Um, I want to digitize them. They're all sitting in carousels, which is probably the worst way to store them over 30 years. Uh, and they're taking up my entire garage. I'm retired. I want to get rid of this thing, but I want to scan them. Uh, can you make me this thing? And what he described was um, a trigger that he would take the lens off of a slide projector, point his camera at where the lens was, at the slide in the film gate, and then he had actually been doing this by hand, triggering the slide projector with one remote release and triggering the camera with the other. Uh, he had like a Nikon D something with a macro lens pointing at it and, you know, alternating boop, 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 and, you know, scanning film this way. And it uh, worked pretty well, but uh, not really automated. And so he asked me to make uh, this trigger that would trigger a slide projector and then trigger a camera and then trigger a slide projector and then a camera. Uh, over and over. And I said, sure, great. And he said, well, you know, I'm a little busy right now. Don't put it in the front of your list. So basically forgot about it for a year. Um, sold a customer, a mongoose. He, uh, you know, within the first week he had it, sent me an email. He said, uh, this is great. Thank you very much. Now can you make me one uh, for mounted slides? And I said, look, you know, if I had to make a... Um, a slide projector, the mechanism that advances slides accurately, you know, I'm going to charge you five or ten thousand dollars worth of R&D to reproduce uh, what Kodak sold and you can get on eBay, you know, by the millions right now for like eighty dollars. So I'll tell you what I'll do is I'll make a trigger and you buy the slide projector, you know, I could source you a slide projector and uh, build you the whole setup and I'm going to charge you thousands of dollars or a couple hundred bucks, I get the trigger and then you just put the rest together and it'll, you know, cost you a few hours worth of time and uh, it'll be much cheaper. So um, that's what I did. Uh, I made the Boop Boop Trigger, um, which is like a really simple device based on the Mongoose. It has um, two triggers, one that triggers a slide projector remote advance and one that triggers a camera. Um, it has four or five, six settings. Um, how long it presses the camera shutter release for, how long it waits after before triggering the projector, how long it presses the uh, projector trigger or, or uh, advance button for, and then how long it waits again for the slide to drop into place uh, before it um, triggers the camera. And then um, the other settings are how many frames do you want to capture before it goes beep, 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 and then finishes. Um, you can set it to infinity, so it'll go all day long and more, or you can set it to like, let's say, 80 or 140 in a standard Kodak carousel, so you don't just go around and around and have to watch the thing, you hear it beep, and you can change the carousel, although I recommend a stack loader on a Kodak projector, which I bought one for $27 and works great, uh, because I don't keep things in a carousel, and if I'm going to do, you know, my grandpa's archive that's 50, 60,000 slides, I don't want to have to mount all of them into a carousel uh, one by one and then scan them. That doesn't really save time. Um, and then it also has one more setting, which is sound on or off. Uh, so it can beep or it can be silent if you um, need it to be in a silent environment. And it stores all of those time settings to internal memory. So basically you just set them once and then um, plug it in. What the user has to do to meet me halfway to make this thing sort of inexpensive for them is um, take the slide projector remote and either cut and splice in uh, two wires that go to the boop boop trigger uh, so that it can trigger the slide projector. Or um, what I did was I disassembled the remote and I just soldered on two leads to the contacts uh, of those wires so that I could retain functionality of my remote and then also plug in a secondary pigtail and we'll take a look at that in a second. So um, really, you know, you need 
a wire cutter and stripper would be great, but you could probably do it with a knife or a scissors uh, and some electrical tape. Soldering iron is great, don't actually need one. Um, and yeah, that is that is what is necessary. Then you need a camera and a macro lens, probably a tripod. A level is helpful. Um, and you can do this with a slide projector lamp, uh, which is a very bright halogen lamp that's designed uh, to project an image over a large distance that's enlarged and still be bright. Uh, I find that is a little too bright and less even than I would like, so um, as an optional thing, which will improve your results, um, I bought some high CRI LEDs, uh, which uh, basically uh, broad spectrum LEDs that uh, render color well, um, that are in the form factor of a halogen bulb that you can then swap in for your halogen bulb in uh, the projector, which will be much dimmer. Um, but again, you're not projecting uh, an image that's four by eight feet on a wall. You're just photographing it against uh, a light source. And then I think I'll make people some um, custom uh, laser cut acrylic diffusers that drop in where a projector's condenser lens or heat shield would go. Um, and then, you know, the added benefit of that is, you know, if you leave a slide in your projector and leave the thing on for like an hour, you won't melt your slide like you would back in the day while forgetting about it. Um, and that's basically it. It's a really simple device. Um, takes a little bit of setup to do by yourself, but it, uh, it should be useful if you have 400 years worth of slides to scan. So it's a really simple little device. Um, it's got two buttons, uh, a start and a stop button, a uh, knob to adjust some timing values and turn the sound on and off, and uh, you can push the knob in to reset. It's got uh, this XT60 connector for your um, slide projector remote, which I'll show you how to wire in, and that just plugs in uh, like that. And then it has a standard 5-volt uh, power jack for the power adapter and a 2.5mm audio plug for your camera cable release. And then it has a power on-off switch. And that's basically it. Uh, what I'm going to do now is show you how to wire in a remote uh, such that the uh, boop boop can trigger your projector. So um, you can always, of course, take one of these remote cords for whatever projector you have. And the way it advances is it connects the center pin to one of these side pins, and so you could just um, cut the wire and figure out which two wires uh, connect to trigger the advance on the projector, and then wire that in. But I wanted to preserve the remote uh, so that I could give slideshows later on, um, so I just took this apart and added um, this pigtail with the XT60 connector, and they'll both work while in use, so I just leave this on the table. So I'm going to take this apart, um, and we can see how this works. So um, on the back of my projector remote, in most Kodak slide projector remotes, there's a bunch of screws. Here. And then this comes apart. And so basically what's going on inside of these triggers is you have three wires, right? Um, this yellow wire is the central contact that corresponds to this central uh, ground or power pin in, in the center here, but depending upon your uh, slide projector, that might be a uh, you know, different pin configuration. And then it's got two buttons, right? And these buttons, um, when you push down, you know, reverse or forward, it pushes down uh, these contacts to contact um, this back central pin. So forward, reverse, I believe. Is that true? Yes. And then, so what I did, instead of cutting the wires and adding um, just this XT60 plug, I just soldered on to the leads um, these two uh, pigtail wires. So this yellow wire goes to the central pin, which was actually a yellow wire on the Kodak projector, um, and I just soldered it right to the contact. And then this red wire, uh, which was also the red wire coming out of the projector naturally, I soldered a red wire. I think I picked these wires to match. Uh, and I soldered it directly to the contact. And then the only thing I had to do to mine was um, I just clipped off the very corner of this little indent for the wire to go through uh, so that my wires could pass too without crimping them. So I um, soldered those in, put this guy in here like so. I said like so. 
Okay, and then that just goes in there, and then the cover goes back on to hold it in place. And make sure that I have the wires uh, seated again. <laughs> yeah, how's that help? <laughs> okay. There we go. Just pretend like it's together, they will never notice the difference. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the shot where Ethan smashes the thing on the ground. And then I uh, screw it back together like this. So again, that's the uh, fancy way to do it. But um, again, you can just cut and uh, twist these wires together and electrical tape them if you don't have a soldering iron. But uh, if you do, it's uh, nice to preserve the remote and um, also be able to trigger your projector out of the boop boop. So you can use the boop boop trigger to um, to digitize film with a standard halogen projector lamp or even a terrible little homemade LED like this to modify the projector so it's not as hot. Um, for really excellent results though, um, what I did was grab one of these LED uh, bulbs that fits in a halogen form factor and it's uh, 95 to 98 CRI which means it puts out almost a full spectrum and renders colors really good. Not super important for black and white slides, but I assume you want to capture those Kodachrome colors. Um, this is the thing to do it with. So what I did was I attached the pigtails of this. This is 110 volts, just, uh, you know, same as the halogen bulb in the projector. So no extra wiring. Um, and this is a goo 10 socket to match the bulb. And that just goes in like this plugs in and twists. Um, and then I soldered these ends and uh, plugged them into the original uh, halogen socket. You could solder those in and glue them. And then what I did was where the condenser and light shield goes, I placed a bunch of these uh, white acrylic discs. Um, if you are uh, making one of these setups yourself and want to buy the whole light setup, I will send you some and some custom cut acrylic discs to whatever diameter or shape you want, so long as you send me a dimension drawing. Um, anyway, this one is super bright, very cool, won't heat up your slides. You can leave it on forever and um, has a really good uh, color spectrum for digitizing slides. So we're going to button it up and take a look. All right, so I'm going to quickly show you how to uh, set up the boop boop trigger with a camera and a slide projector uh, to quickly and nicely digitize some slides. So. The first thing, uh, you take the power adapter and plug it in. Then we plug in our uh, trigger cable uh, to the XT60 connector. And then we plug the camera in to this control port here. Click. Um, now we can turn the slide projector on. And we have a light on there. And we can test uh, the remote. Slide projector is working. Oh, it doesn't reverse with this stack feeder. Okay. Um, then basically you want to remove the lens on a Kodak projector. You just use the focus and focus it all the way out and it pulls out. And then with one slide in the gate, um, you can turn on your camera and set it up. I used a level to level the projector uh, forward to back and left to right on this table and then leveled the camera as well. Um, then with the camera's film plane perfectly parallel to the film plane of the slide, I set up a long macro lens uh, looking into the, uh, into the film gate of the projector. Um, we can see some, oops, some glare here. You probably shouldn't have all of your room lights on while you're doing this or something covering. Um, and then you want to make sure that you're, you know, focused, focused on your slide. There we go. And uh, set your exposure, either aperture priority or uh, manual, however you're going to do it. Then you can turn on the trigger. And then um, it's pretty easy to set up to enter all of the settings modes. Uh, press and hold the blue button and then press the knob. And then we can set the trigger interval, which is how long it's triggering the camera. 12 milliseconds is enough. Press the knob one more time and you get the frame delay, which is how long you wait for the camera to take a picture. 
I'm giving it almost half a second at 491 milliseconds. We we'll go 500 milliseconds here. Um, that's rather long for a slow exposure, but you can probably get this a little faster. Then the projector trigger time. Uh, 16 milliseconds has been enough to trigger this projector to advance slides. And then the projector delay, I give this almost two seconds to advance the slides. This is kind of a slow one. Um, the other settings are how many frames you want to limit to. Let's go to, say, 11 frames, 12 frames. Um, you can turn the sound on or off. We'll leave it on. And then when I exit this, it stores all of these settings to memory and gives me a beep. Now the next time I turn this trigger on, it will reload those settings and then I don't have to basically ever do that again. Okay, so to use this guy, um, you can press the red button and it will trigger the camera and then change a frame like this. Come on, focus. And then at any point you can pause the frame by hitting the red button again and you can restart or pause at any time and by pressing the knob in you can reset the frame count back to zero um, and if you let it run to the end we'll fast forward through this And at the end, it beeps and resets the frame to zero. And that's it. Okay, so I'm going to do something a little bit different with this product. Uh, instead of going straight to Kickstarter, you know, I don't think this is a product that, um, again, I, I don't think people are shooting and mounting slides. I think they're shooting slides and leaving them in strips, just like I have done for the last 15 or 20 years. Um, but I think there's probably a lot of people out there that, you know, it's worth it to them 300 bucks to do all of their slides in a weekend that might have taken, you know, a month or a year. Uh, my uncle has always said that when he retires, he and I would take two or three months, buy 10 flatbed scanners and go through all of my grandpa's stuff. But like now he's going to be able to do it in a weekend, if not a day. So um, I'm going to first sell a bunch of prototypes uh, and see what people think of it. Um, if they want to make any sort of additional functions or have any issues with it. It's already like a pretty uh, robust and reliable system for doing what it does, but maybe people will want to move the menus around or, you know, maybe nobody will want them because nobody has any slides because they threw them all in the garbage in, you know, 2005. But I, I know a few people who want them. And so um, what I'm going to do this time is just sell, uh, you know, a bunch of the early prototypes that are working and then I'm only going to sell them to people who agree to send me some feedback and also make me like a little Instagram video of it working that I might be able to use in a Kickstarter video later uh, as advertisement. So maybe in four or five months this will become a Kickstarter project. Maybe nobody will want them now and you know the project will be done. I'll send one to my uncle. I'll send one to a friend of mine who's digitizing an archive of the photographer and that'll be it. But um, you know if 20, 30 people want them, I'll make a Kickstarter eventually out of it. So for now, um, if you want one, send me an Instagram message or email me, ethan at cameradactyl.com. Um, you got to be willing, again, to send me an Instagram video of it working with your setup and, uh, you know, fill out a review form, basically. Uh, let me know if there's additional functions you want. Um, and yeah, that's it. Thanks very much.